A brand new Range Rover will cost you over a hundred thousand pounds. This one, 400 quid. To make things even better, it's a notoriously unreliable Range Rover, a P38. So we're gonna ask the question today, should you buy an ultra cheap Range Rover? We'll see what 400 pound of Range Rover gets you. Has it had an involuntary decal? Yeah, 100% it has. Take it green lane in. <laughs> Look at this thing emerging from the bush. And then get it inspected by a Land Rover specialist. I shouldn't be able to do that. Why? As payback for Edwin buying a broken barn find Mark II GTI without telling any of us. We're equal now then. Nowhere near. Until this needs an engine swap, so and we do it. five minutes. <laughs> This Range Rover has nearly gone to the scrapyard multiple times, with previous owners abandoning it due to issues ranging from complete electronic failures, chronic overheating, and most recently, being unable to even unlock the car. Our friend Kyle, who's been helping us on our Mark II GTI project, said that he had to scrap this Range Rover because it had given up on him one too many times and no one was interested in buying it. So that's where we step in, because we've given Kyle the £400 scrap value to give this Range Rover one last chance. I'm leaning towards this being the worst idea we've had but we gotta find that out there's only one way of doing it let's have a look around this thing wow look at the color of that into um i'm not doing a good job of masking this has it got a two-tone door panel no but it, we've got that so we've got it it is a complete car that's all we need to worry about okay okay we've it has this. it all of the parts are in the car yeah in various places okay. some of them are even where this should be when you put a key in a p38 and turn it it beeps three times and then every time after that that it beeps that's telling you it has an issue how many beeps are you going with? I'm going to go with six. I'm going to be optimistic. I'm going to say three. Oh my what? word. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. What sort of magic is this? I don't, I don't know. But they got... all have issues. Let's see how it sounds. Is oh. that working air suspension? Yeah, it is. You've bought a 400 pound Range Rover that has working air suspension and no beeps on the dash. <laughs> Should we test this out for sure? Should we go do the high mode? Wait for it. <gasps> Holy shit! Right, you know what that means. We have to take this thing off road. Oh yeah, we're gonna go, we're gonna go off road and we're not idiots. I do have a slight question though. What's that? The V8 in this. Yeah. It's not a bad sounding V8. Yeah. That's not the sound of a normal. That is custom. It's custom. It's uh, got, no, it's got yeah, like yeah, an yeah, overfinch or is, like a magna flow. It is, it is custom. They've got some. Has it had an involuntary decal? Yeah, 100% it has. <laughs> I mean, there's metal there. It's just not welded. It's better than the GS300. Oh yeah, that thing was awful, yeah. Exactly. And this thing oh, sounds good it as sounds well. Sounds pretty neat. Why does it smell so fuely? Because in the process of nicking the cats out of it, the thieves also fancied the uh, O2 sensors as well. So it's running incredibly rich. At least it's running. Man, this thing, it can do everything. And now with the S suspension that we know it works, we can do any of these pictures. We can do line, uh, car, motorway. Car in the sea. We can get out of the boat. I don't know yeah, what that yeah. means. And when you tip your ramen bowl out. <laughs> uh, sport mode as well. Sport mode and manual. Yep. I think this is where the bulk of the loading was doing. That's never a good sign. I don't actually know what that is. That's a heater return pipe. That's an extra part in the back of the car. That's never a good sign. We'll work that out later. So yeah, this pretty much sums it all up. So you got sawdust, you got paint on the seats. I would assume then that the boot is similarly busy. Oh no, the boot's different, we'll say that. There's the door card. Yes, I told nice. you, look, good. Also, if you didn't know, that's the other P38's party trick. Split tailgate, proper Range Rover. This is just more evidence of it being a workhorse. I love it. I it do love like, it. This car was used to complete tasks. Do you want to try and fit this? Or? Uh, yeah, why not? Can you hold the key? We've got to make sure that this key doesn't go inside the car and the doors are closed. Why? Because it's got quite a chronic central locking issue. Okay. Also worth noting that Jack's P38 is our crew car currently. We've got another P38. We're loving life right now. Fresh, can't like say, new. You can't say fairer than that. Absolutely. What else we got? Engine? Engine. Um, supercharger oil treatment. That was down by the battery. That's an oil additive. The dot dot four. four. Only Range Rover would give you a place to store spares in your engine bay because they know you're going to be in here so much. So this is a later 4.6, so that's a Bosch 4.6. This is the good engine. This is the one to have. 99? This is 99. So it is a 99. So it must have been the first of them. Right at the beginning. Put them over to Bosch. They call these a Thor engine. Like the Norse God. No, the movie. It all seems to be fine. I mean, there's evidence of various leaks over yeah, the years, but you're going to get that. That's, you know, you're going to get that on these big jobs. 4.6, 200 and... Something. I know 420 newton meters. 420? Yeah. Oh, mate. I'm going to say it. Good purchase. Thank you. Should we tell Ethan about this? Oh, 100%. Let's ring yeah? him. Yeah, let's give him a ring. He's on holiday, so we got to yeah. let him know. He's abandoned us. He left us with money as well. Yeah, idiot. <laughs> idiot. <laughs> there he is. 
Hello, mate. I found a 400 pound Range Rover I was thinking about buying. Is it good? No. We've got quite a lot of crap already we need to get rid of. So that's a yes. Perfect. That's yeah, a yeah, yes. Nice. Yeah. Well, have a good holiday, man. Cheers. Thank you. you Goodbye. Mate. Lovely. Right. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. Yes. Yes. Range Gra Rover, height of luxury. Jack, why is there an air compressor for a P38? Because the man's had to change out three of them, okay? Give him, give him a break. Three of them? This is a fourth one. That doesn't give me confidence. Look, I'm not worried about any of it. I'm not worried about anything. Didn't Carl say he was in a band? Didn't he say there was a band CD in here? Yeah. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Tunes cranked up in our bargain Range Rover, we hit the road to see what it was all about. I can actively see the fuel needle going down. We left here with a quarter of a tank, I'm almost at empty, and we've probably done about three miles. Should we ask the cyclist if he's got any? Yeah, they have some in his fanny pack. Five oh. Here's what you do. You know what you do when you're driving a Range Rover. What? Right. See the police. Give, Just give them a middle class wave. It's patented at this point. You I could be doing the most foul thing in the world if someone drives past you in the countryside and you just give them the. I like, see. Oh, oh, what a lovely oh, young boy. What a horrible P38 you're <laughs> driving. I had one of those in the early 2000s. Yeah, when I was a f***ing idiot. It's bloody <laughs> awful car oh, that was. Feeling like real Range Rover owners, we got onto the motorway to see what 400 pounds of 4x4 feels like. Kyle used to take care of this car for the owner. He has a running list of expenses that he spent here. So since 2019, 3,000 pounds of miscellaneous parts to fix the body control module, air suspension problems, that sort of stuff. 3,246 pounds at a local specialist. We've got 477 pounds at Halfords, 350 pounds for the air compressor, and we've got 450 pounds on new tires. So in four years of ownership, that's coming up for what, seven and a half grand. But what that surely means is that we've got it for that little period where everything's been fixed you know that thing where you put in countless hours and countless money and then it works for like three months yeah and then it starts again where you go this has gone wrong this has gone wrong. Yeah. maybe that's what we're gonna get we've just watched the piss head down the pub load up the fruit in and we're coming in with a single nugget yeah. and taking the hey, jackpot that's what they we? say 90 percent of gamblers quit just before they win big yeah <laughs> we're taking a big old gamble with this one <laughs> Praying that the P38 gods were smiling down on us, we arrived at the first green lane the Range Rover had potentially ever seen. Right, you ready to see what 400 pounds of Range Rover deal through? Well, we're here. This is a motorway. Yeah, it's like a secret little off-road spot that is directly on a motorway. What? I'm not joking. Brake hard, brake hard, 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 hard. It's hit, it's hit, it's hit. What, is this it? Yeah, and there you go, straight off road. What? Off the road, thank this you. can't be right. Yeah, in we go. Oh my word, what is this secret little route you've got? Yeah. Look, already not a care in the world. Oh, look at this, not a I am world. loving look this. Look out there, how good's that? Oh, here we go, big dip, here we go. You gonna do it? Like it couldn't care less, mate. Look at this, 400 pounds doing Range Rover things. It's just coming off road. So the beautiful thing about this as well is if you do go out and buy a cheap one, you don't really have to care all that no, much. No, this doesn't matter. Two rangers in their natural habitat. Sorry, second natural habitat garage, isn't it? Scrap yard's the first one. <laughs> do you know what I love about this as well? We were, but a moment ago, doing like 70 yeah, on, the on the motorway in the height of luxury, like dead silent. And now we're just tearing it through this shit. Look at this thing emerging from the bush. Look at this thing go. This makes me happy oh, when, cars, live, when yeah. cars do what they were meant to do. Well, that's the beauty of it though. Like, it is, we can do it with this because it costs 400 pounds. It doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't matter if we scratch it up. I mean, like, it does, there's, but... a, there's a thin line. We don't want to hurt this. No. Like, I'm not going to run it into a tree, but if it gets a little bit scratched journeying through the Berkshire jungle, so be it. it battle scars are all right. Yeah, don't go to the right if you could, please. What, you don't roll down there? Um, I mean, I prefer not to. I'd rather not, that's gonna really ruin my day going down there. It's gonna there. really ruin my P38's tame work. <laughs> oh, we were, oh, that was like a good 25 degrees. That little farmhouse thing. Yeah, that driveway's absolutely mental. 
I kind of want to open her up a little bit. Come on, man. All right. Whoa, that rubber, that rubber. Oh. Oh. That's all right. I wasn't, I wasn't scared at all. I wasn't. Um, all right. Shit your pants. Yeah, all right. Stop, stop, stop. There's a big thing hanging off the bottom of my car. What have you done, you silly sausage? Oh, it's wedged up against the ah. an exhaust. Where? Oh, uh, I know it's a P38, but man. Right, onward. <laughs> oh, that's a bomb. Okay, we've got a traction failure. I wonder if that has anything to do with us doing a mega acceleration on dirt nah. back there. For what we just went through, I'll give it a traction light. Really? Oh, we've got another one, ABS fault. Ah, oh, ladies and gentlemen. It's starting. But we made it. Yeah. All we lost was ABS got our traction control. And where we're going, we don't need those. No, you don't need them at the scrapyard. The other issue that we've got is... Oh, uh, I'm gonna have to fix that. Is there a beep for that? It's on the dash, door card. <laughs> it survived that tricky green lane. We've got, it's not as harsh. It's maybe as harsh. It could be as harsh, the next one. Our warning lights have gone off. It's fixed itself. It was just saying, lads, just calm it down a little bit if you could. It wants to live. P38 magically curing itself, we arrived at the second, even more beautiful green lane. Here we go, the peak. We've climbed a mountain today. That is like a oil painting. That wasn't even full beans. Half a tin of beans. Half a tin of beans. I also, though, pretty impressed with your one. Yeah, I know. Doesn't have the air suspension, doesn't have the V8. Will, behind the wheel, has never driven off-road in his life before. And he's like, yeah, it's all right, it's easy. Also, these oh, aren't yeah. off-road specific tires. This no. is a civilian car. And it just so happens to <laughs> send it off-road. Just off not care. I thought you said this was another calm one, Edwin. Yeah, you know, it's fine. It's calm compared to like the Parry Dakar. It's just a little bit narrow. Don't, oh. worry. don't worry about those noises. I'm not caring about the car I'm in. I'm, care I'm caring about my crew car behind us. Yeah, but you can't hear that. You're the one polishing my motor. Yeah, could do. Well, also, you're the one going at Mach 3 through it. All. If I go slower, um, it's not going to help. We've still got to push through a bush. Yeah, but you're absolutely slunking it silly down here. Do you not appreciate the views? Yeah, they are banging. I'll give you that. You asked for green lane, I gave you one. Oh! Jesus! How was that for you? Happy? Very good. I'm impressed. A 400 pound Range Rover. Home? Home. It's that way to Ham. Ham? Ham. After trotting through Ham, I took the car down to Land Rover specialist AJD to see if our ownership would be as costly as the owners who cut their losses with the car previously. So we've come to AJD off-road to see owner Andy and bring him our ultra-cheap Range Rover. Cool thing about Andy, he also races in the British Off-Road Championship in a Milner R5 with a big LS in it. It's pretty cool. It really is wicked. On top of all of that, and he's also my uncle. So this is a prime example of nepotism, I think, isn't it? Yeah, but you've come to visit me. You haven't really about no, this. No, 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 it's not about this. Your second favorite uncle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what are your first impressions? It's a bargain. Yeah, no. It uh, is, uh, isn't it? Are there, are there many P38s out there now, do you reckon, for 400 quid? We're steadily seeing the, uh, the values increase. Just the fact that it's got an MOT, you'd like to think it's worth 400 quid. We did actually take it green lane in, so it's got some battle scars already. Yeah, that's devalued it. Was it 300 quid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do these rust? To be honest, we don't see too much problem with chassis rust. So the worst examples we see, when someone's had a boat or a jet ski and backed them into the sea in their life. Oh, really? We've got things like, yeah. is that a good sign? Uh, it's better than a Red Bull can. <laughs> <laughs> But running-wise, it seems pretty happy. It pulls very well. Oh, we haven't, we haven't even checked that. No, there's not much in it. No. I think we could probably put a drop in that. That should unscrew off that. Okay, so the first issue, that's right? That's a good start. That is a good start. Bloody hell. Perhaps that's why no one's put oil in it. Yeah, no, it's just too much aggro. We didn't even think to check the oil. That's quite bad of us, isn't it, really? Right on the mark. That's a good guess, wasn't it? No, that's years of experience, though. <laughs> no, it was a guess. <laughs> It doesn't look like it's got any antifreeze in it, it's clear, but it has got water in it. It's always good to have something in it, right? You're impressed, aren't you? you no, know, to be fair, it does not sound too bad. How many miles is on it? About 150. Really? Yeah. That's sweet, isn't yeah. it? Do you know what good test for these? Drop the suspension a minute. All right, now put it up. That compressor's running now. Put your finger on there. It's 
got a good suction on it, isn't it? Yeah. Well, when they are tired, you do that, oh. there's no draw. I see. So you know the air's going into the system. Yeah. That's a, that's a real simple way of knowing whether your compressor is actually drawing in air. But don't tell anyone. No? That's uh, an industry secret. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, cut, we'll cut that. Yeah. That mirror is pointing all the way down. And when you put it into reverse, it tilts the glass. And what it's supposed to do is when you come out reverse, it's put it back. It, it doesn't do it, And no. it's not. It's been driving me mental, yeah. Yeah, does it? Yeah. Perhaps I'll just leave it like it is. No, please don't. The little electric motor has decided to pack up, pack up. so it's an, it would need a new mirror. Yeah. However, I'm sure you can only do these on vehicles with memory seats, but put it in reverse, and you hold the memory button on the seat, air, mirror dip off. Stopped it. Has that just sold that? That's it. That's been driving me mental for yeah. like three days. All works, Jack. I know, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, you've excelled yourself. So, is that the only key you got? Yeah, it's yeah. the saddest key on planet Earth, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, they're expensive. <laughs> you see what I mean about the chassis? I mean, I've seen them rotten. I mean, there's a bit up there. It's actually quite clean. Actually quite clean. Yeah. What have they done to that? No, they right. <laughs> Kyle said that he found out that this had happened at eight in the morning and he had to be at work at nine. So he apologised for the state of the exhaust. He had an hour to, to whip that up. I was looking for a dead pigeon somewhere. <laughs> Rad's all dry, look. It's a bit weepy around here. Yeah, but I wouldn't say that's excessive, especially not for a year. I've come under these before and it absolutely soaked. Look, look at all that transmission and transfer box, all nice and dry. It is interesting though, look, it is rusty as you go towards the back end. Do you reckon it's had a dip in the well, seat? Well, maybe, because it has got tow bar in it, so maybe it has had a bit of salt water on the back end. Is that just a new CV boat? Yeah, I think it's just coming out that front lip. It's not excessive though. They are MOT failure, so that would have to be oh, done for the next yeah. MOT. So, I mean, at some point, it'll want those front bushes doing. I shouldn't be able to do that. Do you suppose that's affecting my ride quality? It won't help. <laughs> They're probably original, to be honest. Put them on the list. We might as well make it a mint. Yeah. I only need a full body respray and shouldn't yeah. mint. Well, that don't let you down, does it, paintwork? No, true. I've never been on the side of the road because of a paint job. Them bolts are loose. They're probably almost tightening up. Yeah, they won't tighten up. So they're spinning in the back. So they'll probably have to cut them nuts off, get that drum off, get the flange off, and change the nuts from the back. It ain't the worst job in the world. It's more time than, than parts. These are common for the air springs perishing. So the surface of them go all cracked and leak. That looks new. It's definitely had a pair of back ones. So what the front ones are like? She said four. Pleasantly surprised underneath here? I am. Just looks like an honest old P38, doesn't it? It's had pretty recent front discs and pads as well. And not much of a lip on it. No. This might sound like a stupid question, but do you reckon P38s are as unreliable as people make out they are? It was new technology. It was cutting edge, wasn't it, in its time? Everyone was a bit scared of it, I think. Yeah. Now, when you look at what we got now, these are basic. Plus, they're easy to fix, like you say. If you don't want to spend the money on air suspension, just put a spring kit around them. Give us a rock on the steering jack. It's got a little bit of play in the box, but nothing excessive, is it? Now it's all tight under there. Underside looking cleaner than we expected, we moved on to a quick diagnostic test. When we took it green lane in, it threw up an ABS and traction control light, then it went away again after a little while. You've got front left sensor output intermittent and pump relay driver fault logged. If I clear it, if it does it again, we we'll reread it. Yeah, obviously it hasn't upset too much. There was no lights when it come in. It's listening to the Lambers, but they're not there. They're all chopped out. Is it all standard stuff though, really? Yeah, well, I'm expecting to see that. I'll just be nosy, really. But yeah, I, I yeah. Wouldn't, normally wouldn't worry if it's running all right and got no lights up on the dash. Yeah. Air suspension. <laughs> No faults found. Who would have thought that from a 400 yeah, pound piece? It's worth yeah, it just to see that. Very pleasantly surprised. Yeah, we'll come up with a deal, Andy. 1,200 quid. <laughs> I'll leave it here. <laughs> <laughs> I've got enough to do. <laughs> with that, Andy priced up what it would cost to get our P38 to a semi-respectable, roadworthy condition. On here, there isn't anything service related, so we haven't priced a service. So we don't know if it was last serviced, although yeah. it's just had a couple of litres of oil. We'll leave it at that. Catalyst downpipes. A genuine catalytic downpipe assembly is 1,850 quid. Is it? Yeah. We can get a brick pipe one for 245. Oh, I said really? they didn't. Can only estimate the labour on changing that because it's the studs and they come undone. They don't look too bad. If they was to snap, then you're into taking manifolds off, but you have to worry about it as and when it happens. Yeah, we'll no. assume it's gonna come on. Wish. Down pipes, gaskets, lamb sensors, CV boot kit, radius arm bushes, both ends, because the other end, although you've got to take the radius arm down, you might as well change the, the other end of the bush as well. Mm. Four litres of antifreeze, it's been topped up because the water's clear. The new key you spoke about, they are genuine only, 259 quid. I'll be quite confident that central locking would work off of it. Really? But you ain't gonna know till you try it. No. Handbrake, nuts, are spinning on two of them. The other two tightened up, so that's gone tight again there, but it's only too tight. Oh, the shock absorber. Missed that. That shock absorber rattling. The most has changed a pair of front yeah, shocks. Yeah, Total of, before VAT, 1,764 quid. 
Okay. So with a VAT, it's 2,117 quid. Oh, well, that includes the couple of litres of oil we've put in. It, it, that's all not up bad. singing and dancing, two and a half grand. It's a cheap car. Turns out it's not too terrible. Yeah. Yeah, if you fell over in shit, you'd come up stinking a rosy's chest. Yeah, <laughs> it looks seems to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, cheers for looking around it, that's excellent. But there we go. Well, it's nice to see you. Only normally Christmas and birthdays. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or when I've got a really shit Range Rover. <laughs> To find out if we were just in the honeymoon phase or not, I dailyed the P38 for another week to see what issues would arise. And in that week, we have discovered that the electrical gremlins in this thing are very real. On a couple of occasions, it's just refused to start, just engine disabled, and it's taken me a little while of getting out, locking it, unlocking it, locking it, unlocking it, locking it, unlocking it. After a while, it will get there, but I tell you, it's not much fun. But we love this thing, and until it really pisses us off, we're gonna keep on using it. As you can see, we've got it today towing the Gulf, which you will see in the next episode. It's going to be a good one. So thanks for watching. Make sure you go out and buy yourself an ultra cheap Range Rover, except don't because it's a horrible idea. Click here to subscribe and down here to watch more videos. See ya.